Hi guys, I'm Alexandra from largefamilymama.com and today I'm going to be sharing with you what we have in our art and craft homeschool supplies, which is behind me there and there is tons to get through. And the reason I'm doing this video is because in one of my previous videos, I did a video about the books that we're going to be using this year for art and handicrafts. Somebody commented on that video saying that they would love to see what we have for our art and craft supplies. So that's why I'm making this video today. One thing to bear in mind though, when you watch this video is that I didn't get all of this stuff at once. This is stuff that I've been accumulating for many years. I've been homeschooling for over 10 years now. And yeah, it it's not something you can get all at once. So don't feel disheartened and feel like you, you don't have enough stuff or you can't homeschool because you can't get all the stuff yet. Um, I remember when I first started homeschooling and seeing all the pretty pictures that people put on their blogs and Instagram and all different things and feeling kind of envious that they had they were able to get all this lovely stuff for their homeschool and I couldn't really afford to. So this is just stuff that we've had to gradually build up over the 10 years. Some homeschool parents focus on things like wooden toys. I would love to have a big beautiful collection of wooden toys but we've chosen to get more arts and crafts stuff instead because um, at the end of the day that's what my children find to be more enjoyable and it's more useful to them so that's what we've invested in. So it would be really great if we had a little craft room that I could film this in and show you where we keep everything but unfortunately <laughs> we don't have one we are a family of nine living in a very small house it's 850 square feet and uh, there used to be 10 of us but my older son has moved out now he's got his own place but yeah nine of us in 850 square feet and trying to fit in all the homeschool supplies is a bit of a challenge so all this stuff that i'm showing you now has got different places all around the house you know wherever i can find a little space then i will store something so i have i keep some of this in the kitchen i keep some of it in the hallway i keep some of it in our shoe cupboard i keep some of it in our living room and i keep some of it in my bedroom so it's all over the house but i've gathered it all together I would like to be able to film this in a, a nice little craft room but no I don't have one so bear with me as I try to show you what we've got while it's all piled up on my kitchen table. So let's go and have a look. So first of all I'm going to start with our most used items, our essentials for our homeschool with regards to um, arts and crafts and that's these pencils here. These are the Lyra Furby pencils and these are absolutely fantastic. They're really great for younger children. So anything up to the age of 10, they're brilliant, even older children as well, but definitely for the younger children. Next most used item is the beeswax block crayons and the stick crayons. And I've got this lovely holder to keep them all in now. For ages I didn't have one and I always wanted one. So yeah, we're very fortunate to be able to have one now. And I've got the tutorial up on how you can make your own beeswax block crayons if you're on a budget and you can't afford the Stockmar ones at the, at the moment. So um, I'll link that for you. Um, but these are fantastic and my children always love to use those in their main lesson books. These are the chalks that I use on the board every day. We have a big black board on the wall up there. And uh, yeah, these are excellent, these chalks. Um, this is a Japanese brand and I'll link those below if you're interested in those ones. And then here we've got loads of um, different colouring pencils. We've got loads all over the house, but so these are the main ones that we use in our lessons for the younger ones. And then these are the ones that the older children use. These are the Prisma pencils and these are you know, the best you can get as far as I know. They are brilliant and we've got two boxes there for the two older girls. And then We've got these ones for my 10 year old son. They like to have their own sets, otherwise they argue. Then we've got these felt tip pens for my 10 year old son as well, just for when he's doing his own thing. Not when we do lessons, I don't use felt tips for lessons, but that's when he does his own stuff in his own free time. <laughs> and then these are for the older girls, their felt tips that they use. 
and some more felt tips in there for the younger ones. And then in here, this is a basket of just pretty random stuff. We've got some stamps if they want to do some stamping. We've got pine cones if they want to make anything with the pine cones and stones uh, which they like to paint so they collect bits and pieces to put in there. We have these peg dolls that we like to decorate and make little gnomes with and things like that and we've got this Fimo clay which my older daughters like to use and they make jewellery with that and they've also got some resin and a UV torch to set the resin. We also have this air drying clay which the all the younger children use so they make their things and then paint them. Another item that is very much used almost on a daily basis are these watercolour paints again by Stockmar and I've got a lovely wooden holder to keep those in which is fantastic I love that. Over here we've got a little kit to do needle felting so we've got the needles in there and the protective um, finger and thumb thing there um, and we've got the pad here which unfortunately the dog has decided to start chewing so we need to get another one of those and then we have loads of wool but I don't know where it's all gone someone's put it somewhere but we've got tons of this wool in all different colours and the, the children really enjoy felting that's one of their favourite things so I always try to keep some canvases on hand for the children to do some paintings on with either acrylic paints or oil paints this is just a, a a canvas board so that's very uh, much easier to store than ones that are already on a frame so perfect for us then um, we have a sketchbook and we have lots of these watercolor paper books Samantha's also using one for her drawings and then we have some paper for acrylic paint we have more paper here for oil paints then we have this paper which is for mixed media and I love this one because it's not white, it's a, more of a beigey colour and so they can really experiment with using white on their pictures as well. And then I have a massive pad of watercolour paper. Um, this is really, really lovely stuff and there's 100 A3 sheets in there. Sometimes I'll cut it in half so we don't go through it too quickly um, because they do love to paint but uh, most of the time I try to keep it as one piece because it's nice for them to do big paintings. So one thing that I find extremely useful to have in your art and crafts of homeschool supplies are these um, folders to keep your work in, your children's work in. So we've got a few different ones here which they can store all the pictures that they want to keep in. So we have these painting boards here for the children to put their paper on when they're doing the watercolour painting or what, any painting really um, just to keep a bit of mess off the table and if I were to get them again I don't know if I would get the wooden ones because they do warp a bit so there are some really good um, plastic ones that I've seen and as much as I don't like plastic I, I think it might be a good idea for the painting boards because then it just won't warp so I'll try to find the ones that I'm talking about and link them below in case you're interested. We have some cutting boards. There's a big one here and that's just the little one. So the children can do cutting out without cutting into the table. So I have a couple of these plastic storage boxes which are actually way too small now but we're still trying to squeeze our stuff in. So we've got our painting supplies in here. This is... Um, the varnish for oil colour paintings. We have our painting palettes. We've got acrylic paints in here, oil paints. We've got the, for the young ones, we've got another Stockmar set. This is the solid paints. And sometimes, uh, just to stop the children all arguing over the paints, I give them a set each to be working with. So we have a few different watercolour palette so we've got the Stockmar one we've got the Caran d'Ache one which I, I love that one that's brilliant and then we have the Stedler one here so yeah acrylic paints and uh, oil paints in there got some wooden beads in there they shouldn't be in there I don't know why they've been put in there and then we've got some bells in here as well which again shouldn't be in there but they are so I'll move those out um, 
Oh, we've also got uh, some soft pastels in here, which again should not be in the painting pot, but it's all a bit disorganized at the moment. And uh, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess, a bit of a nightmare. It needs sorting out. I only, it honestly wasn't that long ago that I sorted this all out. Looking at that box of paints now, you'd think it had been years since I cleaned it out and sorted it all out, but it's actually only been about two months. But you know, I have lots of children, eight children, well, seven living at home. <laughs> and yeah, it gets messy very quickly. So I, I need to have another sort out of that soon. So in the next box, this was originally supposed to be to store all the um, sort of stationary stuff that I use uh, to sort out and plan the homeschooling and stuff like that. But it's just become a bit of a miscellaneous box now. Some string, some alphabet stamps, really nice ones. Then we've got some ink for the stamps, some oil pastels, some more stamps, compass, um, some leather string things, some bookmarks, they have got ink all over them, hot glue gun, loads and loads of odds and ends, different bits and pieces. So we have another box here, this again is, is full of random bits and pieces, so we've got some tissue paper in this bag we have our beeswax bars which we melt down and make the different things with including candles of course um, so we I usually just grate that before trying to melt it so it just melts a bit quicker and then we usually melt it in the tin oops and this um, is ready to be re-melted when we want to make more candles loads of kite paper to make the Waldorf window stars with a little book there that gives you some ideas on how to do them. We've got some picture frames which the children can use. We've got a lino uh, cutting kit here so you can make your own stamps for ink. Bag of feathers, rather random. Oh, in here we've got some wicks for the candles and we have this kind of netting stuff which we were using to make our own watercolour paper before. So we would just put some of this on a frame and yeah, made our own watercolour paper. Then we've got our sewing machine. I love sewing. I used to have a secondhand sewing machine and it was so bad. Every time I tried to sew, it would all just knot up straight away. It drive me insane. And I adjusted the tension, I had it serviced, but nothing would stop it doing that and then eventually I thought well, you know what I'll buy a new sewing machine and I haven't regretted it at all it works perfectly every time now so it's actually a pleasure to sew rather than getting really frustrated and children all love to sew on the sewing machine as well over here we have a box for threads and this um, storage box for them is a recent purchase of mine we used to have all the threads just chucked in a little bag and they always got knotted up and tangled and so I eventually got around to buying this and again haven't regretted it because now none of the threads are ever tangled and when I need to use one I can just pick one and off to stand there detangling the whole thing for ages. Here we have got um, a box that we use for some of our sewing stuff and this one is broken inside because that used to lift up when you opened it like that but now it doesn't so I need to get a new sewing box um, but I need something that's sturdy. These are where I keep my bobbins for the sewing machine and we've got another embroidery ring in there. Got some elasticated, elasticated thread here, pins, buttons and tape measures and all the usual sewing stuff that you need. This is a box that we keep all of our fabric in. It's all in there and we've got some patterns in there as well. Uh, and I do have another ring binder full of sewing patterns that we use. Um, and also we just keep old clothes in here that the children can cut up and make things with when they want to just do a bit of sewing so they just cut up all the old clothes that we have and then this box is full these are just old ikea boxes that really should be replaced now because they're looking a bit worse for wear but we just keep all our uh, yarns in here and we've got some pom-pom makers we've got some stuffing to, when the children want to make some toys down here we have got some 
looms. Now these are just cheap plastic looms from Aldi and uh, I would love to replace them with wooden ones one day but at the moment th that's what we've got. So we've got the circular ones down there and the long straight ones. Over here we've got some more embroidery hoops and we've got some wooden looms. Now this one belongs to my eldest daughter and she started this actually years ago and I think she just completely forgot about it so she'll have to remind her of that. Maybe she'll want to finish it off or start again. Who knows? And then we have this other one here which is slightly bigger and I love doing these weavings so we should definitely be getting these out again and doing some projects. In this box we have got just lots of odds and ends of different leathers and we use those to make different things. It's always a good idea to have some felt. This is wool felt. I like to use natural materials whenever I can. Um, so this is expensive, um, but I think it's worth it. It feels so lovely and the colors are amazing in this set. But we do keep all the little scraps, everything, because I don't like to waste any of it. So these are always used in the end. Everything gets used in this house. I've got a little mushroom knitting thing. <laughs> so you just use this to hook the yarn over and then you can make all different things. We also have a knitting star and we've made some really pretty kind of little ropes with this. We have some string for our looms. That's the correct one, I don't think they've used it on here at the moment, but this is the right stuff that they should be using. And we have a big box of split pins because uh, we like to make movable pictures and different things like that. That's another very Waldorf thing is making the movable pictures. So we like to do that. I think that's just about it for our homeschool supplies. There is probably a load more stuff around the house that I've completely forgotten about. Like right now, I'm remembering that we've got um, a seed bead loom where my daughter makes bracelets and different bits and pieces like that. But I've shown you most of the stuff that we use and it really does help children to not be bored if you have lots of supplies like that. So really handy in this current situation at the moment in lockdown. Here in England, we are in our third full lockdown and we're not allowed out except once a day if we want to exercise. So it's really good to have loads of different things for the children to be doing other than looking at screens. So if I can try and get them to do things like this rather than look at screens, then that's what I do. I thought that was a great video suggestion for this week's video and if you have any more video suggestions for the following weeks then please do let me know in the comments below because I like to make videos that you want to see and I would really appreciate it if you would like comment and subscribe to help this channel have the little boost that it needs at the beginning so thanks for watching and I'll see you soon bye